How's it going, everyone? We are back. Uh, it's a Wednesday video for me. Uh, focusing on another SCS title and what makes this one different from Rostov 41 or Autumn for Barbarossa. This is Panzer Battles. The 11th Panzer Battles on the Cheer River. I think it's Cheer or is it Kier? That's a good question. Is it Cheer? Kier? Kier? Oh, I looked online, couldn't find any way to pronounce it properly. I'm going to go with the with the Kier River. That's probably wrong. I don't know. Someone out there let me know. Anyway, we're going to take a look at the things that make the Panzer Battles game a little bit different than some of CS games. There's some videos out there already. Of course, this one involves Chit Pull, uh, but I'm not going to go too in-depth on it. I do want to show artillery barrages today, and uh, what else could I show? Oh, the, you know, like the general chip pull stuff. I'm not going to go like super in depth on it, uh, but I do want to start a playthrough, uh, which is rare for me. I'm going to be focusing here, right up here, right after the, right after Stalingrad is surrounded, the 11th Panzer went into action right there on the river. And as you can tell by my opening intro, quite a few big battles. Uh, they were, Right there is where they met up and sealed off the fate of Stalingrad and the Soviets expanded outward. And we're going to be focusing right there on the map. Uh, so that is not, definitely not a good time for the Wehrmacht as uh, this, uh, a lot of things went, went badly. Uh, and if you watch my opening intro, you can see some of the damage that this unit did to the, to the uh, Soviets. Um, but we're just going to do some simple stuff today. I want to show an artillery barrage because this game has some... Pretty cool artillery uh, artillery use in it. So let's take a look at that real quick. I'm just gonna flip through here and see if there's any other cases where the 11th, if I can find a map of that, where that was taking effect here. Let's just look real quick. Most of these are focusing on Stalingrad. So uh, yeah, it's the Volga. Yeah, the cheer's not even on this one. I don't think there's anything too special we can zoom in on. All right, so that's where we stand. Let's take a look at uh, artillery in this particular version of SCS. What we have on the board here is... Oh, I lost my pointer. There's a big mess in this room. What we have here is the... German 336 artillery, and we have some elements of that right here. All right, one sec. Oh, goodness. Okay, yeah, so we've got two battalions here, and I just put the uh, this element of the uh, 15th Panzer on here just as kind of a, so you can see what, you know, an armored unit looks like. So what we've got here is 685th Infantry, an element of that, spotting this uh, Russian unit here, uh, the 119th Rifle, there's an element of that right here, and we have a company that has spotted a battalion, and we're going to drop some artillery on these guys. We're going to try to get them out of the woods, and, you know, maybe they're prepping to uh, advance on Suravikino, I think that's how you say that. So let's see how this works. All right, now artillery in Panzer Battles. Uh, it's a barrage, and when you have terrain for the barrage, right, it specifically mentions this, uh, you want to use the modifier that is best for the target. So we're definitely not going to say, oh, you know, it's a road uh, or a trail, whatever that might be. Uh, we're going to definitely say it's the woods. Okay, so... When you use a barrage, you want to pick the terrain that's best for the target, you know, the most beneficial for the target. And you can conduct uh, barrages in this game against Texas that are not adjacent to you. So uh, the number here is the range. So 16 hexes is pretty massive, right? That, that's a lot. Um, but you do have to have a spotter. Uh, for simplicity, all the all the units, the different types of units with these numbers are just going to be called artillery and lumped in. That includes 88s, mortars, etc. Um, airstrikes are also a type of barrage attack in this game. 
So each artillery unit has a range printed on its counter, right? We already know that. An artillery unit requires an activated unit adjacent to the target uh, to spot for the barrage. So remember when they say activated unit, this uses uh, a chit pull. So you want to pull a chit like this one, okay? And mainly because um, and this doesn't have a white stripe on it. So when you pull this chit, all German units that do not have the white stripe can be activated. Okay, so say you, you pull this chit and that activates him. You can do whatever you want with him, but let's say he's going to leave him here. And you can just say, I'm going to spot this unit and hit it with artillery. Um, now, an activated artillery unit right, can only make one barrage per activation during the barrage phase. A given target, though, can be targeted a maximum of three times, including airstrikes. So what we're going to do is hit this unit in the woods twice, uh, here and here. Okay. Um, barrages are pretty simple. Uh, each barraging unit that hits the uh, hex is done so independently you do not add their strengths up. Okay. And of course we're going to need a die, which I don't have out. I never have my die out when I need it. Trying to find the official Panzer Battle die that's included. Oh, there we go. I found it. Uh -huh, look at that. Uh, let me know what you think of that opening, if it's too long. I know it's like a minute, but uh, I wanted to get the history of the unit like out of the way and not interrupt the, you know, the video. But I thought I'd try something different. If it failed, let me know. Um, also, I have up a live chat from the weekend. Make sure you go back and watch that from Sunday. Uh, I did a little live chat practice. Uh, okay. Basically, you're going to be rolling a die for each barrage. You're going to modify it for the terrain. And you want to get less than or equal to the barrage rating of the firing unit. And all hexes in the target hex will have a DG. If you get additional DGs, there's no further, uh, no further effect. Um, but you could get a kill roll attempt. So every time, so say I DG him and then I do it again, right? Um, every time you DG a hex, you want to roll a die for a kill roll for the stack modified by the terrain effects and stacking. For each kill roll, you have to flip a two-step unit. Uh, if it's only one step, it gets destroyed. So this guy is a two-step unit right there. So he would get flipped, okay? Uh, so there is a chance to really do some damage with this. Um, the last remaining step in a hex can never be killed by barrage. So even if he gets flipped, Right, and you know, we, we hit him again or something, you can't wipe out the last step with um, artillery. And the kill roll that you need uh, depends on, there's a code, like a, a code on some of these, if it's yellow coded, um, that affects uh, the kill roll that you need. Uh, German 88 needs five, others need six. So we're gonna try to see what we can do here. Let's see what kind of damage we can do. All right, let's take a, let me just adjust this a little bit. And we'll take some practice at this. Just remember, you cannot completely wipe out a unit with an artillery strike. Um, for stacking, if there's there's a minus one modifier to the kill roll, if there's a single unit in the hex, and you add plus one to the kill roll for each unit that is overstacked above the stacking limit of three. Uh, so just be wary of that. Um, a large stack can get you bombed. Um, artillery units that are in an enemy ZOC may only barrage adjacent hexes. So uh, he would have to barrage adjacent hexes only if he was in his EOC. Okay, so you just wanna keep these guys in back. A range of 16, keep them in the back, right? Uh, some artillery units have the yellow coating inside their unit symbols here, all right, yellow. Okay, these are larger units which are capable of generating losses and have a better kill roll, okay? Um, when you do a kill roll, you will need to, the kill roll is roll higher than the number, okay? So that's why like the yellow coated guys start at four and then there'd be a single unit. So that's, that's minus one. So three or higher would do something. Um, so just keep that in mind if they're yellow coated. Okay, the first barrage is a four here. We have a uh, four, uh, four factor, so it's it's um, barrage uh, ability and defense and movement.
okay? Now keep in mind that a unit in the trees is not necessarily a good thing, right? There's splintered trees and fragments of wood uh, flying all over the place. Uh, you can kind of compare it to like Band of Brothers when uh, in the Bulge episodes where the artillery would explode high up and smash and send just pieces of uh, you know giant slivers of trees into the GIs and stuff like that. So now it's important to note too that the series rules don't even mention artillery. I don't think so. This is literally added in, if I remember correctly, via this game. So each game is probably going to have, you know, its own little artillery thing. Okay, so we're going to hit the hex. We have a four, okay? And we're going to roll a die, and you modify it for terrain, so minus one. And we're going to get less than or equal to a four. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna, I haven't really pre-staged this too much except for, you know, where the units are. Let's see what happens here. Okay, that is a six. So this unit fires and no effect. Oh, that was a pretty, I mean, that was a good roll, right? Sometimes here, it's a bad roll. And a two. Minus one, that is a one. Okay, now a raw roll of one is always a DG. That was not a raw roll. Okay, so that's gonna DG this unit. I might have to put one more unit on the board. Okay, so that's a DG, right? Let's say the first guy had DG'd um, that Russian unit. Okay. For each DZ, DG result against a hex, roll a die as a kill roll for the stack. Well, there's only one in there. Let's try a kill roll. Let's see what happens. Let's say, say the first guy got a DG, then we'll see if he can get a DG. Remember, you can't DG again. It's just going to start another kill roll. So now for the kill roll... Um, we're going to check back here and uh, let's see here. The kill roll is going to be, he's yellow coated, so we need, um, kill a step will be four through six. Okay. That's a four. And remember we would also, um, I forgot our modifier here. We apply a negative one modifier to the kill roll if there's a single unit in the hex. So you use that stacking modifier. So that's actually a three, okay? And I believe that is going to make us not get that. That caused us to not get the kill. So the yellow coated needed four or more, but due to the fact that there's only one, one unit, okay, um, in the hex, they're so spread out that it does not cause the casualties we were looking for. All right, and that did not work. Now let's take the second unit and let's see if he can get a barrage hit. Let's see what happens. We're looking for less than four, four or less, sorry, less than or equal to. So here's a five. Now remember we're in the woods on a barrage, that's negative one. So that's a four, that is another DG, but technically it's a kill roll. All right, let's see if we can get this now. We need to go higher. There's a four that matches it, but again, we get the stacking penalty of negative one, that's a three. So despite everything we dropped on that Soviet unit, unit, we do not eliminate a step and he becomes disorganized. So that is just basically the barrage rules in this game. Remember a kill roll? It's a little confusing, it threw me off there for a minute, uh, you know, Initial barrage, you want less than or equal to the barrage rating. Kill roll, you need to get equal or higher. So it kind of reverses itself. If you're overstacked, you get some bonuses. Okay. Simple stuff. Um, if an artillery unit gets attacked in ground combat, um, they use their printed defense and they have no ZOC. Okay, they do not exert a zone of control. All right, what are some other things about this game that's a little bit different? Uh, let me think here. Well, there's the activation chits. Okay, so let's bring those out. This is actually going to be a pretty short video. There's not too much that's different in this game. You know, you just have to remember some of the little features here. So let's bring these out. We have these activation chits. Okay. 
I'm gonna move this over just a tad bit. All right, and then we're going to slide these off here. And uh, this video will go live while I'm currently not even at home. But I thought I would give you guys something to watch while I was gone. I know you might miss me. Uh, okay, so here's our chits. And this game does use activation. That's why I'm interested in doing solo. Here's what we've got. All right. Okay, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to take your four activation chits for each side, right? Oh, I'm missing one. What happened to my... There it is. Okay. You're going to put these in a cup, right? In addition to those, you're going to place a dummy additional chit that, uh, that, that you're going to throw in there. So the dummy chit can be anything. So you're going to take... Uh, let's just throw this in there. And we're going to throw this in there. So each person is going to put, gonna put these in a cup, and that's going to go in a cup. Okay? Uh, during the activation phase, you're going to draw it out blind... Okay, and then use the sequence of play with the units indicated by the chit that you pull. So, for example, first tank, fifth mech, uh, or all units, or everything with the white stripe, or everything that doesn't have a white stripe. Now, what happens, you say, uh, when you draw a dummy chit, if you draw it, that's not an actual formation chit. No activation takes place, and you lose your turn. So, you're like, you pull this out, and you're like, ah, crap. You know, you got the dummy chit. Well, you just lost the initiative. Swings back over to the other guy. So the dummy chit is a very nasty little addition there. Um, and the player who begins, right, takes the initiative for the turn and is the first activation phase player. And then you alternate drawing chits until the final activation chit is drawn. If you get the Soviet first tank fifth mech, Okay, that's any Soviet unit with a light red stripe, right? Then there is the all infantry cav, all Soviet units that do not have the red stripe, including MC and independent tanks. And then of course there's all units. And then I told you about the, the Panzer, the German one. So that's kind of neat, right? Now there is a little special rule called HQ coordination here for the Germans. Um, the 336 HQ was co-located with the 11th Panzer, and he assisted in their coordination. Uh, whenever you get an 11th Panzer activation, right, you can roll a die, and it results how many units from the 336 you can also activate. So if you pull this, roll a die, and there you would be able to activate uh, a unit with the 336 ID on it only. Okay, only the ones of the 336, not Luftwaffe, not von Stumpfield, and not Adam or Weike. So let's take a look at what we got here. Actually, I haven't punched those out yet. Give me one sec. Okay, so that would be, here's 336, like the artillery units I got here. More artillery, Whoa, right here. And looks like some Nebelwerfers. Um... What the heck is that? I forgot what that symbol is. That an HQ or something? Bicycle. Bicycle. Um, and then we have Panzer Jagers. So these are 336 units here. So you would also be, I would be able to pick one of these. So I would activate uh, these guys and then maybe I say, oh, I'm also going to use that artillery. So that's the 336. Okay, so that's called HQ coordination. That's 1.8 A on page 2 of the Panzer Battle specific rule book. Uh, let me think here. Oh, we got to check about the air power chit. Um, at the beginning of each non-dummy activation phase, right, when you don't draw a dummy, right, for each chit activation, the initiative player only, okay, uh, you can roll a d6 to determine how many airstrikes you receive during the barrage phase. So there would be a five airstrikes, for example. Place the air power chit on the turn record track to the number of airstrikes remaining. So, like, see if I, I would take this and I would put it like on five on the turn record track. And that lets you know how many airstrikes you have. Airstrikes count as yellow coated artillery barrages that don't need a spotter. Okay. They can hit anywhere on the allowed maps and have a barrage rating of four. So, you can just say airstrike 
Don't need to boom. You just call it in, done. Um, uh, no more than one airstrike may target a single hex. Okay? If you don't use them, you lose them. Um, and they mention a note that it's easy to forget this, so be sure to roll for air support at the beginning of each chit activation if you are the initiative player. Okay, and you need to mark it and use your air power. Don't forget that you have these because it can make a huge difference. You could DG a hex, then send the boys in there and uh, take it out. It's not like OCS. You want to DG the hex. DG it. Get it out. What else makes this game a little bit different? Let's take a look. We have some optional rules in here. Uh, things that can swing the game for you. Right here. They got some uh, optional stuff that you might want to try using. Uh, we have the flexibility of German command structures by having the 11th Panzer activate also on non-11th Panzer activation shit. That's crazy. That could give you four activations each turn. It strongly favors the Germans. That is crazy. All right. Uh, command coordination, play without the 336 being activated, okay? Favors the Soviets a little bit. Uh, early start. For the scenario 2.1, return the Soviet unit chits to the cup after the first activation of the first turn, okay? Then the Soviet player draws the next one and proceeds normal. This gives you a free activation at the start of the scenario. Better Soviet command. Let's remove the 12 hex limit for road march. Okay, well, I didn't go over Road March. I'll go over that next. Uh, better German response. Again, that has to do with the activation chits. And then the slow response is for the Soviet all infantry cavalry, only units with an MA of 10 or more. So there are some optional rules that you can try. Let's cover the Road March real quick. I actually forgot about that. Road March is kind of like your strategic movement in like the Revolutionary War games or other games. Uh, when you do a Road March phase, a qualified activated unit may road march, okay? Um, you have to be in a road or track. You cannot be DG or out of supply. You cannot be within three X's in a unit, and you cannot be stacked, okay? And I think there's that Soviet one here. All right. Right there, you can move any distance along a contiguous... Uh, contiguous combination of rotor track axes you can move normally in the regular movement phase following a player's road march phase in which they have moved uh, so you can do both restrictions listed here once again Soviet units with a movement allowance of 6 may road march 12 okay um, so that's interesting there's an optional rule that, that uh, affects that uh, if I find that interesting here. Yeah. Remove the 12 hex limit for road march with 6 MP. That's interesting. And uh, that's really about it. Um, I'm trying to think of what else makes this super different. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, it's like Autumn for Barbarossa. There's not, there's not too much there. Uh, there's not too much extra. But... Each game simulates a certain, you know, battle. So I'm sure that the rules are there for certain reasons. And there's been some other playthroughs on YouTube. You can definitely check them out uh, and see what you think. Uh, there's a thing for overruns, of course. Uh, what else they got in here? That's about it, really. Supply sources, typical stuff. Um, exploit capable units. As you know, the you got to have the yellow stripe behind there and that's about it um, again uh, quick fast playing uh, each turn is two to three days each hex is 500 meters okay so we'll be getting into this and I'll probably set up the first scenario something something dinky uh, and we'll take a look at it and then we'll see how it goes from there and we've got more games coming in I got a game from Sweden coming in has not arrived yet. I got one from Canada, Stalingrad Pocket 2. Um, what else? I think that's about it for now. Um, which is plenty. I've got a lot that I've done. You know, a lot of new stuff coming in. So, All right. That is the differences in this one as opposed to the SCS series of others 
and we'll be doing one more video in this series. Um, I'll keep that same intro opening and we'll see what happens when we get down to it. All right. I will be back in town tomorrow. This is me talking to myself in the future. Should be back Thursday, late. And then we'll kind of go from there and hit the weekend. Okay. Thanks for watching. Comments below. Thanks once again.